Okay, so RGCam have sent me this PinSight camera, which is an AI camera designed for Raspberry Pi 5, but it does work with a 4 and a 3, although the 3 may struggle a bit on some of the AI bits. Now, if we flip this over, you can see that it's designed to connect directly to the Raspberry Pi 5 with these four holes here, screw holes, and it plugs in just with a USB A to C cable. Let's just have a look at their website to show a few of the sort of commercial things that they would use this for. So you can see here there's all sorts of object detection that it can do. So fruits, leaf blight traffic signs, plant disease detection, yield monitoring, occupational safety, object detection and pose estimation. Well let's play a bit more of the video. Here you can see the three fruits and it also has like a percentage of how accurate it thinks it is and it's recognizing all three at the same time. You can see here that it's detecting the bad part of the leaf and the sign. So this is more in a factory, but you can see how very quickly sort of assessing things that are going on and also assessing the uh, vegetables there. And it talks about, you can see it, it recognizes the people. It looks like from their helmets. I'm not sure what it's doing here. And then this guy, <laughs> it must have been funny filming that. As I said before, it uses a Raspberry Pi 5, but they do mention at the top here, performance with Raspberry Pi 3 and below might be affected. And this is an interesting picture because this is the bit that deals with the AI. So obviously it's using the Raspberry Pi 5 for some of its functionality. They have a dedicated SOM, which is a system on module, and that's there to deal with the video. You can see here, hardware-based encoding for H.264, 265, MJPEG, 4K30, 1080p60. So delivering faster video processing with reduced latency. And there's a few more demonstrations here. Mask detection, face recognition, head posture detection, fire, fatigue, blur faces in real time. And there's more demos on their site. Obviously, I'll put a link to it in the description. So obviously, this cable is meant to be that when it's put together, so it must be this way around, uh, that it can fit into the USB 3 socket, I'm guessing, and then into the USB-C. So obviously, that, that works absolutely fine. But uh, what I quite like as well is that you can just use a normal USB-C data cable and you can get the two units much further away. So if you don't want the to be attached to this you don't have to uh, obviously USB-C is, is a standard as long as it's a data cable that's fast enough this is aluminium the outside base and that's for cooling um, but not for the Pi 5 I can't imagine because it's not really touching the Pi 5 so it must be for its own chip which is based in here which I guess is the one that's going to do most of the hard work mine didn't come with any screws but I don't know if that's because I've got an early release version or something um, but I have got loads of screws in boxes so let's see if I can get something that fits so if I use long ones of these then I can do it finger tight and uh, probably just get away with two of them really it's not like the pie is heavy or anything yeah that's all nicely in place so let's pop this one in and pop this in okay let's see if we can install this Okay, so we've got the dependencies here. Let's just copy that. Open a terminal with Control alt t and paste that in. The program downloads two Depth AI projects in the script execution directory. Depth AI Python and Depth AI. Okay, so that's all finished. So let's copy this in. It says USB connection speed high, but then it says disabling depth, no previews available, adding defaults, enabling low bandwidth mode due to low USB speed. That could be because I'm using a different USB cable. I ended up running it from this Pi 5, but with this red cable running to the camera, and you can see it's pointed at my little Game Boy there, uh, and that maybe isn't a fast enough cable. So let's try a faster one. So this cable is a USB DisplayPort cable, which is super fast. So let's see if that runs. So let's CD into that folder again and run Python Depth AI demo. Oh, that's nice to see. Uh, USB connection speed, USB speed dot super. This shows me some, I guess, RGB information. We have a zoom function. Oh, okay, so the arrows are when you've zoomed in. That makes sense. And then we've got save current image, copy image to clipboard, display properties. 
and if I put something else in the way of it, like this keyboard, oh, it's very fast actually. It says <laughs> person, it's picked up my hand. Person, 90%, that's very quick. So I've just turned it to the side and it's recognized the chair, even though it can only see a tiny bit of the chair. That's quite impressive. And if I stand in the way of the camera and move down, you can see it detects me as a person. And if I spin it around to look at the screen, it picks it up as TV monitor, uh, NVMe drive, train. My cat wants to be in the video. You can see 99% a cat. Although if I move it around a bit, it does seem to think my cat is a dog uh, every now and then. And it gives a very strong percentage rate that it's a dog. Uh, and if I move it around to the table, you can see it's picked up the chairs and also dining table it picks up as well. And what's that pick up in my sofa in the background? Oh, chair in the background. And then back to my cat. So the hardware is excellent. The AI is uh, a little bit out on what it thinks is a cat and what it thinks is a dog. So it says there's some more demos in the examples folder. So let's have a look at those, and they're Python. So let's type in Gini, and let's open them up. So if we go home, depth AI dash Python, and then we've got an examples folder, and we should be able to use some of the things in here. So camera ISP, camera preview. So let's run that, and we should hear the camera click. And here's the camera, and if I put my hand in the way, you can see it's pretty quick to adapt. So I found this image manipulation tiling one, and what it does is splits the image into two. So I guess if you want an overview of one area and you want to zoom in to another, then it treats the two separately. Probably for machinery or something like that, I would think, monitoring. Pretty cool. I don't know what warp mesh does. Oh, it's done some weird effect. Oh, you still get the original, uh, albeit zoomed in quite a bit, but then you get this warped effect. Rotate warp, pretty trippy. Neural network. So this one definitely picks up my monitor. Let's try and put some images on there. So if we get an image of, say, a bear, uh, and let's actually download this. So we can show just the image and we'll do that full screen. Where does it save it? Does it save it in documents? Oh no, it saves it in downloads. So if we get that to be full screen, cow, sheep, cat. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go back and see. <laughs> Look at this guy waving. Uh, so we'll say car because cars come up. So we go for images and let's go with that one. That looks like a fairly standard car. You can see it's picked it up on the right hand side there. Let's go with people. And this has got loads of people in. I need to move it over so it gets most of that image. Yeah, so it's definitely detecting all the people in that image. So when you pick an image, Yeah, it's definitely doing that, all right. So this is called Object Tracker. So if I put something on the screen, which seems to work pretty well. Okay, so this is Tiny YOLO, and you can see how quick it picks things up. So if I show it my table, it's picked up the remote control on the table. It's picking up the chairs. There's obviously a lot going on here. Occasionally it picks up potted plant. The screwdriver it seems to think is scissors when it when it picks it up. And as I move back over, you can see it's picking up the chairs by the island there. Uh, it's picking up the oranges in the fruit bowl. Uh, and the most impressive thing, I think, if you go to the back of the kitchen, it picks up the microwave. It picks up the built-in oven. And it even picks up the refrigerator every now and then. Uh, and that, you know, I haven't got any lights on at the back of the kitchen. 
it's pretty dimly lit there but it does come up with refrigerator microwave and so on i don't know what it's seeing there's a pot on the stove there i think it's picking it up as a pot it's really hard to read because it comes up and goes so fast but you can see how well or it thinks my coffee machine is a microwave as well uh, but you can see how quickly if i move it around it picks things up and it's always adjusting so it said something like knife and scissors for the screwdriver but it's quite far away from it yeah super super impressive right can we get this to be portable i've set up the camera as a portable device you can see how i've got pie sugar which is only 3.7 volts so i don't know if this is going to work or not um, but basically the battery which is this which comes with this board is designed to power the pi but it's more for a pi 4 uh, obviously we've got the usb-c cable going in to power the arducam so let's switch on and see if we get anything happen okay so no lights on the pi yeah nothing okay so i'm going to try it with the pi 4 and see if that works. Two reasons why it might not work with the Pi 5. I actually installed it incorrectly because I've had this so long and I, I couldn't remember how to do it. Basically this device powers through the GPIO pins and uh, until it was powered through the GPIO pins that wasn't going to work. But now I have got it powered with the Pi 4 through the GPIO pins. I can switch it on and it will boot my Pi 4. And then I can access it with remote desktop with VNC and this is it with remote desktop uh, so if we open those folders where was it depth python and examples so this is all by remote desktop at the moment over wi-fi and it was yolo was the the one that i was using last which i thought was quite cool so let's try and launch that in terminal okay so momentarily vnc lost connection when it connected but uh, it has picked up again. I clicked on the Wi-Fi and it's all right now. So it is actually working completely wirelessly. You can see it's picking up my chair. If I put an orange in front of it, it detects it's an orange. I don't know what it's going to do with the kiwi fruit, but it'll be interesting. What does it say? It says it's an apple. Shouldn't have much trouble with these. Bananas. Apple, what's it going to do with the lime? Oh, it still thinks it's an apple. It likes apples. So if I pick this up, you can see that it's detecting it. If I move it around to the fruit, here it's picking up the fruit. Oh, apples in packaging, it's not going to pick up very well. Oranges, what's it going to do with my keyboard? keyboard so i have a completely portable device that i can use for a as an ai camera uh, and use it via remote desktop that's really impressive okay so embarrassingly i had the screen protector on all the way through the video but i haven't got it on now and i thought i'd show it full screen just to show you how much detail there is so look at the detail here on the cable at the top and uh, the sync wire and the braided cable and everything. Everything looks really crisp. And I found this mode that gives me, uh, so it's color camera and RGB ISP scale. And you can see that it, it looks incredibly sharp and detailed. It's a really nice camera. And it is responsive, so if I put my watch strap in front of it, you can see it focuses really, really quickly and then back again. So great work, Cam. Thanks for sending me this camera. I've thoroughly enjoyed testing it. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.